What's up you guys, it's Odyssey of Odyssey Eurobeat. Today I wanted to give you a higher resolution, more intricate tutorial on the Eurobeat Brass tutorial I put up a few days ago. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a new sound. And uh, I'm going to give you a bit more detail as to what I'm doing. Some of these principles apply to how you would go about designing a synth brass in other synthesizers, but for the most part, some of these steps are somewhat massive specific. First off, we're going to go to oscillator one. We're going to take this menu, click it. We're going to go under basic, square saw two, as you can see, and we're going to click that. Okay, from here, we're going to make it a saw wave. Right now, it's sort of between the square and the saw. So to make it a saw wave, we're going to take the wave table and put it all the way to the right, just 100%. Intensity is good, amp is good. Oscillator 2, we're going to do the same thing. Make it a square saw 2. Drag the wavetable position, drag this knob, take it all the way to the right. That's done by clicking on it and dragging up. We're also going to give it a little bit of amp. Short for amplitude. That allows us to hear it. But before I play any keys in, I'm going to drag this up 12 semitones or an octave. If I play it back and it sounds a little hollow, it's because it's recording the sound back through the speakers and microphone built in here. It sounds quite different uh, in the actual file, which I'll be including with this video. It sounds right like this so far. Still not exciting. A little better. Okay, time to do time to work with some envelopes. We're going to go to envelope one. We're going to take the attack knob and we're going to put it right about nine o'clock or where it's facing the left. We're going to take the decay level knob and put it all the way to the right. We're going to click on the sort of drag box for envelope one, and we're going to put it where it says SC for both our oscillators, that is right here. We're going to do it for this one as well. We're not using oscillator three. We can turn that off. But going back to these one boxes, we're going to take the ones digit, and we're going to drag that up to 12 for both of these boxes. It sounds a bit like this. Which is fine if you're doing a telegram sound. Here's where we're going to have a bit more fun. We're going to go to envelope 4, which is the one that is controlling our amplitude. We're going to take the attack knob and pull it all the way to the left. That is sort of zeroed out. We're going to go to the decay knob and drag it I'd say about 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock, if, if it was a clock. And it sounds a bit more like this. Eh, still not great. But the voicing, this tab here, this is where we're going to have our magic. We're going to go under unisono. We're going to click on this number, and we're going to drag it to six. You can do more, you can do slightly less. I think anything less than three will be doing yourself a disservice. We're going to go under unisono spread. We're going to turn on the pitch cutoff and we're going to drag this slider slightly to the right. Not that much. The result is a bit like this. That sounds a little closer to home, doesn't it? We're not done yet. We're going to go under OSC, this tab here, and we're going to check out the pitch bend. Right now, if I had a pitch wheel on this controller, which I don't at the moment, it would bend nothing. Most patches that I know go two, oops, two, two, <coughs> semitones up and two semitones down. By the way, if you make this a positive number, if you drag it up instead of down, 
trying to taking the pitch wheel down will make it the pitch go up. So make sure that that's a negative number. Two is not enough for my purposes. I like to make it 12. Play with however you need. This, this number is not a set-in-stone rule. I like to work with octaves, but that's however you want it to go. Now, this macro is set to the modulation wheel. You can do that by going under Attributes and making sure that this one says Modulation Wheel. If you want to use another parameter, go right ahead. I just find the modulation wheel is a little easier to automate. So we go back to the synth and we can see that's kind of wiggling and wobbling. That's fine. We're going to click on the little four arrow square here. We're going to put it in depth and we're going to put it in rate. We're going to drag the depth number so it goes to about three o'clock if it was a clock hand. As for rate, we're going to start the knob right up top, facing up directly. And we're going to drag the number here to about 130. And we're going to turn on mono. It sounds a little ugly if you don't. With mono on, it sounds a bit like this. A little more familiar. If we turn it off, it sounds a bit more like this. They kind of detach and get all wavy, and I'm not sure how much I like that. You can turn it off if you have a use for it. I prefer it on for the sake of Eurobeat purposes. From here, it's kind of just that much gravy. You can add some effects if you'd like. You could EQ it gently. You could play with the feedback. You can go back into voicing and play with the cutoff. I don't like to do too much cutoff, otherwise it gets a little too trancy. One issue that I've heard a few sort of up and aspiring producers having is they, their brass sounds very trancy, which they, they're not looking for. If you leave the pitch cut off just gently there, you shouldn't have it too trancy. If you don't detune your saws too much, then it's fairly in line with a Eurobeat synth brass. And uh, I think that covers most of the ground. I'll be saving this and I'll be giving it to you as a patch. Oops. Oh, I can tag it. And I will create a new tag massive patch, thank you. And that should do. All right guys, this is Odyssey of Odyssey Eurobeat, signing off.